Okay. Um, no worries. Yeah. So as I was saying, you know, this this is a really cosmic cross that you have here. I just want to say that um, in that, at least from my perspective, <laughs> being the creator of cosmic human design, um, you know, I can see that um, there's going to be a, a, a great need for people like you who are able to make sense of things um, in a uh, in a authoritative way. Um, and the fact that you have the 45 and the 26 on the other side, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, works together with the 64 and 63, because the 45 is the definition of being authoritative, um, being the authority on something. Um, you know, the 45, we see here it's in the throat center. It's um, it's really the tribal voice. You know, it's the only way the tribal circuit gets to the throat. Um, and, you know, the tribal circuit is, you know, um, most of these, uh, like this is tribal, that's tribal. Uh, you know, a good, a good amount of the channels are tribal. Um, you know, there's individual, there's tribal, and then there's the collective channels. Basically, you know, three different ways that human beings interact in the world. Um, and so the tribal channel really is about support, supporting others, you know, so we can have that sense of family, of security, um, really. And so, you know, cosmically speaking, this would be the cosmic family. And, uh, you know, speaking for that, speaking for, um, you know, the people who, uh, aren't able to speak right now um, and, and making sure that everything is, you know, I guess <laughs> understood. I don't know. Um, anyways, the 45, it's the tribal voice. So it has this kind of innate authority to it that um, people listen to. And I see you also have the channel of the alpha, the uh, 31 to seven right here. Um, which emphasizes that even more so, um, the channel of the alpha, you know, there's something about you, something that people respect, something virtuous, you know, something, you, you have this kind of inherent virtue that, um, that makes people listen to you when you start speaking, you know, uh, and, you know, they think, oh, well, this guy, you know, he seems a bit different from the everyday person, I, I should, I should really listen to what he's saying. <laughs> and the ability to say things, uh, you know, fluently as well. Um, so yeah, uh, you've got the 45, you've got the channel of the alpha. Um, and then also you've got this channel here with the 26. You know, the 26 is the opposite complement to the 45. So what would complement the 45 most? Well, some kind, some type of skill, you know, actually being able to deliver on those promises of, uh, you know, authority. Um, and it helps to have some skills, some, some uh, facility to, um, you know, I mean, because in a way, this is calling you, this is calling you out in a way to uh, undertake this kind of cosmic task, you know? Um, and so this 26 is gonna help you a lot uh, in that regard. Um, and the 26 we see is connected to the 44 here. So, um, which is like I was saying, a tribal channel. Um, that's one of the examples of a tribal channel the channel of the transmitter, <laughs> being able to transmit some, some information to others, which goes along with those themes as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, the left angle cross of dominion uh, two, um, which, which is one of the, um, you know, 
really one of the last uh, of in the whole process, in the whole evolutionary process. Um, so it's at the end when when everything is uh, said and done, then you come in kind of and cosmically speaking, then you can come in and maybe it'll be a situation of complete chaos at that point, you know, and but you're able to come in and um, exert this kind of natural authority, which is based on virtue, right? That's the city of the seven is virtue. You know, the seven is in the channel of the alpha. So it's uh, it's this virtue, um, you know, that. Um, yeah, enables you to be able to speak about these things uh, at the at the end. Um, and like I said, the 64, it's confusion, the shadow of confusion. So that's what you're going to be dealing with. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of confusion. You know, all the shadows, all the shadows are everywhere, everywhere in the world, you know, today. And so we've got to deal with that. We've got to... Um, look at it and say, and first of all, get rid of the shadow in ourselves, right? And then we're able to um, start dissipating the shadow for others as well. Um, yeah. it, that just reminded me of the, uh, you know, the the global climate change uh, narrative. And, you know, I've seen articles that they're talking about, you know, putting chemicals in the atmosphere to to you know reduce the amount of sunlight getting to the planet i was like talk about sh creating shadows like damn. literally yeah <laughs> yeah you know things like that things like the the climate change agenda you know um that's a spell that's a spell that has been cast on people uh you know false use of language that's what that is the false use of language making up this narrative that okay it seems like it's supported from everyone but actually no one really supports it you know those types of things and breaking down those types of things for people that's the power of the 64 that i'm seeing here um because it's at the end right so it's it's kind of like you alone have this um have this power have this authority in the 64 um to uh, since it's the last hexagram, you know, um, to uh, yeah, be able to kind of have the last word, I guess, on uh, on what is really true and correct and what's not. Um, and so the sixty four also as well. It is the um, it's the hexagram in which the true self, the liberation of the true self actually takes place, actually occurs. You know, it's not in the 63, which is after that occurs. Um, so the 64 is the one where all the transformation is happening, um, which is what the I Ching is, the book of transformation. Um, it's usually called the book of changes, uh, you know, the book of change. But the word changes is a lot different from transformation because changes, it doesn't imply that it's an, an enduring change. You know, change could be up or down, but transformation is always positive. Um, and so, yeah, true transformation is always going to be positive in that we are uh, liberating aspects of the true self. Um, which is in harmony with the cosmos. Yeah, I am. Um, I've been played around with my uh, title that I, you know, use on <clears throat> on social media, and I got really like goosebumpy when I came up with uh, uh, soul powered alchemical regeneration coach. <laughs> I like that. One, yeah, the acronym is Spark. Oh, so, you know, my goal is wow. to. to help people shine and sparkle wow that's a that's um that's a that's a that's an excellent name um it, it makes me think of the transformers you know the t the cartoon transformers which I, I i think of a lot when i think of this transformation stuff and you know the their kind of soul was called the spark you know the spark 
<laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. And alchemical regeneration, exactly. You know, I love the name, I really do. Regeneration, that is what we are doing here, regenerating. Um, you know, which, which, which is, um, <laughs> uh, you know, um, getting back in touch with our life, you know, our true life force. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, studied through, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Oneness University. It's kind of the, it may have changed its name again, but no. they they had sent monks around the Western world um, to try and help, um, you know, reach the tipping point for the golden age to mm. happen. And what, one of the things that I like hold as a gem from what I learned from those uh, those monks and their guru was the idea of, um, emotional sheaths um i believe they call them samskaras and when i learned about a fucus and its relationship to the snake i thought about how snakes molt mm -hmm. so i think about the alchemical process of transforming those emotional um armoring from the trauma you know, the, the armor is a reaction to the trauma but you know, shedding those layers and, and, uh, yeah. So when I, when I found out I was a fucus, I was just like, damn, I'm the snake holder. Like I'm, I'm delivering the message of, you know, what is the archetype of the snake? You know, it's so deep, like, especially, you know, especially with our Christian heritage of, you know, the, the snake is painted as the bad guy, you know, Right. Yeah. Interesting that that is what is going on when, like you say, the snake is, a, it's always been a symbol of molting, you know, of, of transformation, you know. Um, yeah. I love but, we, but we want to focus on change, not this transformation stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, I see that your Mercury is also in the 64 here. So um, your Mercury is kind of your voice. You know, what are you communicating? What are you here to communicate? Well, it's, it's the same as your sun, the 64. And that means that your sun and Mercury, Mercury are conjunct, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that means very uh very clear and insightful communication you know that uh, when they're working together like that um which now that i mention it you also have the 23 and 43 in your north and south node which is the epitome of simplicity simplicity sim uh I don't want to say simplistic communication, but, you know, understandable communication, um, because this channel we see up here is coming from the mind to the throat. So um, it's about translating thoughts directly into uh, words uh, to the voice. And it's also called the channel of uh, structuring, of structuring, because that's what um, that's what you're here to uh, do in a way is to look at break down all these different structures. That's the 43 um, and get develop these insights. That's the gift of the 43 is insight. And then epiphany would be the city. Um, and the 23 is about is called splitting apart splitting apart which in its positive context means making things simple you know you know making making uh you know doing one thing at a time so that people can clearly understand what you're talking about so you're able to kind of break down these complex ideas into uh these little segments these little gems of wisdom yeah. you know uh, <laughs> which it sounds like you've been collecting many of those gems yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I had a, 
I don't know, just a one, <clears throat> get not a, maybe not a 180, maybe a 90 degree turn um, from, you know, being a high tech guy. I, uh, out of high school, I joined the army, got trained in satellite communications, did that after I got out for a while and then got bored and then shifted to internet engineering and did that for a while until the technology bubble burst. And then I got laid off and I was like, do I really want to like take all this training and stay a high tech guy? And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to think about it for a while. Yeah. And a year later, synchronicity. And I'm you know, talking to a naturopathic doctor. And I was like, I got the goosebumps and the chill up, you know, not the chill, but the like energy surge up my spine. I was like, Hey, you need some help. And then I became his office manager and became a naturopath myself. And so, you know, through my whole training process, like I was developing these little, you know, phrases, these little gems that I would drop to people about helping them understand why they're sick and, you know, how they can be healthy. So it's been, that was 2003 when I started that. So 20 years of gathering all these little gems and I'm just like, no one wants to, you know, it's like most people don't want to listen to like they'll listen <laughs> and then it's just like, uh, you know, they'll go, I kind of reach uh, an overwhelm point, I guess. And I just get so excited yeah. that someone's listening that I, you know, my, my habit has been, I just want to give you more. And then they just like, you know, they, don't want to talk to me at all anymore and i'm like damn i should i need to pay more attention to when people have like got enough type of <laughs> yeah well you know that's kind of your man manifesting generator aspect you know when you when you get going on something you just want to keep going keep going you know um so i could i could see you like you know writing write all those down you know write them down make some blog posts you know uh yeah, do these little segments, uh, you know, that, that seems like something that would be great for you. Um, and that's your north and south node, this 23 and 43. So that's where you're going, you know, um, where you where you where you come from is the 43. So you're you have these insights, you have them. Now, it's time to uh, put them out there. That's where you're going. That's the North Node. Um, so, uh, you know, um, the 23, the uh, the city, the highest frequency is called um, quintessence. <laughs> the quintessence. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, and the shadow is complexity. So we've got complexity simplicity and then finally the quintessence so keep on distilling and distilling um you know your insights and and uh you know getting to the quintessence of of what what it is um so and, the uh, uh i'm i'm in the process of writing another book and uh the I started it back in 2007 and I ended up uh, five years later going, I need to finish this. Mm -hmm. So I closed my healing practice, moved to the mountains north of Asheville. And I got a year and a half in, had written like 250 pages. And I was like, I got like at least 250 more pages to go and maybe 500 more pages <laughs> to go. I don't want to write that book. And I don't think anybody wants to read a 500 or 700 page book. Yeah. So I scrapped it and started over and just did a basic overview. And now, you know, basically it was, uh, you know, body, mind, and soul or body, mind, emotion. And just kind of, and then I threw in a chapter on addiction. Um, but now I want to just focus on the physical stuff. So I'm working on a book called um, Constructing Health. And the subtitle is Mastering the Basics, because some interview I watched on YouTube, they talked about what is mastery. Mm -hmm. And it's like doing the basics really, really well. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that resonates with me a lot. Um, yeah, makes sense. Mm, let's see. Um, 
Yeah, let me let me talk some more about your channels here. Let's cover all the channels. So the channels represent your consistent life force energy. It's what is always defined in you. And as such, these are going to be key pillars of really any and everything that you wind up doing in life um, because they're always there in some way. You know, whereas the undefined centers, they may or may not be there depending on who you, who's around you, uh, you know, and all these other things. Um, so let's start from the bottom. Um, the root, the center of, you know, the root energy, the kundalini energy, adrenaline, you know, that kind of energy, the energy of, of uh, enthusiasm, you know, of, um, of excitement. Uh, of just uh, of of joy, you know, uh, that kind of thing. And so we've got the 53 connecting to the 42. Um, and let me just say one thing about these three channels here, which connect the root to the sacral. These energies are so powerful that they have a separate name called the format energy, the format energy, because they tend to format the entire field in which you're communicating, um, you know, and so because it's the root to the sacral, so you've got this, the root energizing the sacral, energizing the life energy with adrenaline, basically, and so, you know, that's going to be a huge energy, um, and this one is called the, uh, the, um, the, the, um, yeah, maturation, it's called the channel of maturation, balanced development, um, or I'll also call it the cycles, you know, the, the channel cycles, of uh, complete cycles, you know, so you're someone who you like to finish what you start, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of important to you to kind of go back and uh, look at everything you've ever started and, and say, hey, is this cycle complete? Is it complete? Is it complete? You know, or not? Um, and not only that, but also creating new cycles. Um, and, I, and, you know, it's important to pay attention to uh, which, if any of them are unconscious or not. So you've got the 53 being unconscious, you know, the red line. Um, which is what starts the process. So it's like you may not always realize that you're starting, you're you're going into a new cycle, but that's what it is, really. That's what it is. And that's kind of always, you're always geared to that. You're always kind of living in the cycles. Um, because again, this is the a format energy. So um, everything kind of just naturally has, a beginning and an end for you. Um, and consciously, you have the 42, you know, so which is what ends the cycle, what closes the cycle. Um, and uh, so consciously, you are probably more focused on closing the cycles, whereas beginning the cycles, it's more of a spontaneous kind of thing, you know, but you always like to go back and, you know, check, is it complete? Is it complete? You know that kind of thing, um, and yeah, this this call, it's called balanced development. Um, development of what? The true self, of course, because the, that's what the fifty three is. Developing gradually, developing what gradually? The true self. Um, it's usually not called that by that name, but the uh, the the oracle of the cosmic way it does make clear that it's called developing the true self, you know, is what it's really talking about. Um, and then the 42 is called increase, increase. So the energy of growth, you know, the most um, pure energy of, of getting more, you know, of uh, becoming, developing. So that's the ultimate goal, right, of development is to increase the true self. Um, while decreasing the ego uh, in us. Um, 
So yeah, so that's your format energy. So it's like it's kind of like that energy is so powerful that it's just going to kind of unconsciously be there and influence all the things that you undertake and, and all the things you interact with. <clears throat> I've also got one of the format energies, I've, but see, I've got the one on the other side, the 9, the 52, which is kind of this channel of uh, logical um, processes, uh, you know, and so... You know, I like to do things like, you know, in a certain way, you know, the most efficient way. And, and um, so but this is also a format energy. And I, I can tell you having one of these format energies, it's there all the time in everything I do, everything I do. Um, yeah, because it's starting. That's what is starting your entire chain of energy is right here from the root. OK, and so then we go to the sacral. And from here, we've got um, several connections, and this is the channel of integration. Um, these four different gates, you see they all kind of connect at this point. Uh, the 20, the 10, the 34, and the 57. So this is the most complex channel in the body graph, um, or circuit, complex circuit. Um, and so overall, it's called the circuit of integration, meaning that, um, you know, it kind of integrates everything uh, together. Um, and really, this is about being able to be yourself. Um, that's what this channel, this circuit ensures, is that you're going to ultimately have the opportunity someday or today or have had the opportunity to actually fulfill your true self. Um, and believe it or not, that's not something everyone can say because not everyone has this channel, which guarantees survival. That's what it does. It guarantees your own personal survival. It really does. Um, so for example, this, this 34 to 57, let's look at that one first. It's called the channel of power or the channel of the archetype. Um, so this channel, it's, and we see it's connecting the sacral to the spleen. The spleen is the center of body consciousness, awareness, sense of what is healthy for you and what's not. Um, and so it's this kind of intuition you have about what is dangerous, you know, about what is really harmful and what you really need to avoid and also what is healthful uh, for you. And so that energy being energized by the sacral, it's going to pretty much ensure that you are alive. <laughs> and I mean that literally because this is the energy that will allow you to, you know, jump out of the way of a moving car. You know, it's just going so fast. You're like, and you're like, wow, how did he like jump out of the way of that? That's this energy, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it's physically empowering you to uh, survive, you know, your survival instincts are, are keen, you know, and, and they're refined. Um, and so, yeah, literally this channel, it's, uh, it's going to provide you that physical power to survive in the world. Um, and the ultimate goal of which, of course, is to be yourself, <laughs> to fulfill your archetype, your uniqueness. Um, and, you know, we might we may infer from you having this that whatever it, it whatever it is you're here to contribute is something that is vital to the whole. We can infer that because not everyone has this channel. So not everyone is guaranteed to survive <laughs> you know like uh you know people die people die all the time um you know but not with this channel not with this channel um so this channel is going to ensure that you've survived and, and you have a chance to contribute you know what you have to contribute um and then we have the 34 to 20 the channel of charisma of, uh, you know, this, uh, it's the it's the manifesting generator channel. It's going from the sacral to the throat. 
So it's this kind of continuous sacral energy being manifested, um, which can manifest as something like charisma. Um, you know, it's like you're, you're always active. You always want to be active. You want to be doing something. Maybe it even feels really uncomfortable if you're not doing something, you know, or if you don't know what you're doing. Um, now, uh, you know, so like an archetypal phrase for this particular combination would be, um, you know, I, uh, I know I am doing now. I know I am doing now, or I know what I am doing now. Um, I don't necessarily know who I am <laughs> because that's the 10, right? That's the 10 and you don't have that one. So um, that's the kind of the missing component to which you're attracted to figuring out who you really are. But, and once you get that, you know, then you can say, then you can optimize, you know, your, your, um, what you're doing and all that. And then finally, we have the 20 to 57, which is the channel of penetrating awareness, mm -hmm. penetrating awareness. So this is like, yeah, almost the psychic ability, I would say, because it's the ability to tune in to these very precise um, in invisible kind of thought waves, you know, um, that's what it means by penetrating awareness, uh, the penetrating awareness of thoughts um, and, you know, consciousness um, and being able to see that and, uh, you know, see people's uh, kind of inner self in a way, you know, based on on their outer appearance, you're able to kind of penetrate into the realm of consciousness, you know, which is invisible. Um, you know, I, I found <laughs> that um, just over and over and over again throughout my life with, I'll, it's like, I'll either like have a great connection or people want to get the hell away from me. <laughs> and, and I think it's because of that penetrating awareness. Like they know they can sense that I can see underneath their facade, and ah. that's not something they want to deal with. So they're like, out of the picture. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's that. That sounds right on. That sounds right on point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you know everyone, almost everyone, uh, you know, has a uh, has more or less. Yeah, it's a facade, you know, it's a, it's kind of a mask. Uh, yeah, and it can make people uncomfortable, yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, the, you've got, um, so you've got that channel. Now, the spleen, we see it also connects, it, it takes kind of a, another pathway here uh, to the heart, uh, which is the channel or center of will. Um, the center of of will and anything that requires this kind of willful power you know this this initiating shocking power um you know that that is um very very you know will it's willpower <laughs> um so this 44 to 26 uh you know we're combining that willpower with the uh the intuitive awareness of the spleen. So this is the ability to really um, be able to uh, look at someone or, or interact with someone. And it's like, you're automatically able to adjust your uh, speaking style or what you are saying, tailor it to that particular person because you can intuitively see, oh, well, this person, they're probably from this background. They probably have that kind of education or from, they're from this kind of country, you know, and, and you're able to kind of uh, automatically know all those things about someone um, intuitively. And so you're able to tailor everything you say, which is coming from the 26 part of it, um, to precisely the right kind of wavelength uh, to impact that person. Uh, you know, this is really the channel of the perfected salesman. Um, that's one uh, way of looking at it. You know, uh, you're just able to, you know, kind of 
yeah, talk to anybody and yeah, sell anybody anything pretty much. Um, if that's what you want to do. Um, the, the astrologer you... that did my yeah. destiny reading yeah. <laughs> told me that I had the ability to sell snow to the Eskimos. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it's also, uh, you know, apart from, you know, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, selling something, it's also transmitting, transmitting. So the ability to convey some kind of knowledge, right, to everyone, because you're able to tailor that knowledge and make it um, fit that person, which sounds like it would be a really great thing for a human design reader, uh, you know, or something like that. Um, cause you're just able to like, kind of, you know, subtly adjust all your words, you know, to, to where it, they're really connecting with it. Um, you know, um, yeah, that kind of personal personalization kind of thing. Um, okay. And so finally we get to the throat, uh, we get to the throat um, which is where every all the energy is wanting to get to the throat, to get out into manifestation. Um, and so you've got um, from the throat, we go to the G center and and uh, and and also we've got the Ajna, the mind. Um, all are all are leading into the to the throat here. So um, let's look at the G center. So the G center, is the center of the self, the true self. And the G really it stands for God, God center, um, spiritual center. So all, all of our spiritual intuitions and stuff and sense of self and sense of, um, you know, who we are and our direction in life is coming from the G center here. Um, and this channel connecting it is like I said before the channel, the alpha. So this uh, very much a leadership channel. Um, and, you know, it's, it is that because you're talking from, from the self, you know, which is what people really want to listen to. You know, they don't want to hear you talking from your uh, fake facade, you know, from your ego that doesn't affect anybody because it's not your inner truth. Um, so speaking from your inner truth inspires people to listen um, and indeed uh, to be led uh, by you in some way, you know? Um, and that's another thing about the seven is anticipating future trends, future directions, future patterns, seeing, it's about seeing the patterns. Um, you know, the specifically future patterns. Um, and you've also got the uh, the 15 and, uh, and two there. You know, the two is all about direction. And the 15 is kind of this, um, kind of this love of humanity, <laughs> love of humanity gate, you know, and then, you know, wanting to do what's best for, you know, everyone really. Um, so yeah, all that going into the throat and, um, also coming here from the top, we've got the, uh, 4323. So breaking things down simply, clearly, um, explaining con complex things. Okay. And all of that is ultimately going out through the 33 and the 45. So these two gates here, the 33 and the 45, are really going to be your focus. That's where all your energy is going. That's where it's all ultimately winding up at. And mm -hmm. what are those? Well, I, 